Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk and discuss about Lord of the Flies, Chapter 2, doing a close reading activity where we look at how the boys try to light a signal fire. Um, a close reading passage is where you just take a particular section of a text or a chapter or a bigger work, and you analyze it for specific details. Um, while there's a lot that goes on for chapters one and two of Lord of the Flies, we're going to particularly look at this section because it offers us a lot of detail um, and it kind of gives us an idea of how the story is progressing. So already in chapter one and chapter two, we've got these boys who have crash landed on an island. You've got some very dynamic uh, characters. Um, all of them have striking personalities. You've got Ralph, um, you have Piggy, you have Jack. Um, there's definitely um, conflict between them um, as they try to decipher who is in charge, who is not, what are the rules, how are we going to survive and live, um, how are we going to get rescued. And one of the items that they come up with is this signal fire at the top of the mountain. So when you conduct a close reading passage, and we're going to be doing uh, several of these for Lord of the Flies, um, you just look at a particular section, even though you know, uh, even though you have head knowledge of what else is going on in the story. So if you look at this passage that we are uh, analyzing today, um, it doesn't talk necessarily about Ralph or Jack or Piggy or the rest of the boys, but you have a general idea of how they are behaving. So as we progress into the text, um, you are aware of what else is going on and that kind of influences and helps you as you make decisions and kind of pull apart these pieces um, or this specific piece, okay? Um, let's take a moment and preview the questions. Um, you guys have this document in front of you. Um, the very first question says, circle the verbs in the passage. If you would like to highlight them or underline them, you could do that as well. Um, what can you infer from the strong and descriptive verbs that are being used in relation to the fire? So looking here, what, what action words are used to describe the fire that's slowly growing out of control? Okay. Um, what, what is that and how is that being uh, articulated to the reader? Okay. The second one, personification is a term when inanimate objects are given human-like qualities. What human or animal qualities are illustrated by the fire? So our author, William Golding of Lord of the Flies, he actually begins to describe the fire as very animalistic. And he uses specific animals and, um, and, and verbs and words and phrases that are very animal-like. And so we want to kind of see, it's not necessarily the fire burned out of control, um, but the fire roared, right? There's, there's animalistic characters, uh, uh, characteristics that are applied, um, which is, uh, a part of personification. Okay. Uh, question number three, how does the growth of the fire represent the attitude and action of the boys? So even though the boys are not mentioned, even though the boys are not referenced, you know from chapters one and two what's going on with them, the tension that's growing, and how does that fire relate to what's happening? A lot of times authors will use surrounding events or activities or um, events in the novel or in the story that key into what's happening for a character, okay? Um, number four says, explain how this moment in chapter two is a turning point for the bo boys and a social order on the island. So how does this quickly change things? Um, we may need to take our knowledge of what has happened afterwards and then um, after this passage and then kind of go back from there. But for the most part, those are our questions. Okay, let's take a look at our passage. Let's see here. Um, at any point, if you need to pause the video so that you can highlight, that you can annotate, um, I want you to multitask as best as possible. But if you need to stop the video and uh, do some markings, or if you want to jump down here for your questions, you can do that as well. Okay. <clears throat> Smoke was rising here and there among the creepers that festooned the dead and dying trees. As they watched, a flash of fire appeared at the root of one wisp, and then the smoke thickened. 
Small flames stirred at the trunk of the tree and crawled away through leaves and brushwood, dividing and increasing. One patch touched a tree, tree trunk and scrambled up like a bright squirrel. The smoke increased, shifted, rolled outwards. The squirrel leapt on the wings of the wind and clung to another standing tree, eating downwards. Beneath the dark canopy of leaves and smoke, the fire laid hold on the forest and began to gnaw. Acres of black and yellow smoke rolled steadily toward the sea. At the sight of the flames and the uh, irresistible course of the fire, the boys broke into shrill, excited cheering. The flames, as though they were a kind of wildlife, crept as a jaguar creeps on its belly toward a line of birch-like saplings that fledged an outcrop of the pink rock. They flapped at the first of the trees, and the branches grew a brief foliage of fire. Uh, the heart of flame leapt nimbly across the gap between the trees and then went swinging and flaring uh, along the whole row of them. Beneath the uh, uh, canop, excuse me, beneath the care, wow, beneath the caraping boys, a quarter of a mile s square of forest was savage with smoke and flame. The uh, separate noises of the fire merged into a drum roll that seemed to shake the mountain. Excuse me, I am very tongue tied this morning. Um, you'll notice that the fire is very descriptive. So if if you read through this and you're like, yeah, Mr. Cortez, I have no idea. You fumbled over all of those words. I have no idea what they're saying. One, you can go back and listen to the audio that's been provided for you. Or two, you can notice in the very beginning, let's actually just kind of take a look at these first two sentences. I am still waking up. Um, this part right here, it says smoke was rising here and there among the creepers. The creepers are the plants, the, the shrubs, um, the foliage that's there on the island, okay? and festooned the dead or dying tree. So anything that's not living is gonna catch fire real quick, okay? As they watched, a flash of fire appeared at the roof of one uh, wisp, and then the smoke thickened. So all of a sudden there's a little flash of fire, it's caught and it takes off, okay? Small flames stirred at the trunk of the tree and crawled upward, uh, crawled away through leaves and brushwood, dividing and increasing. So they were going upward on the tree and begin to spread quite quite frantically. So even in these first, what, three sentences, if we look at this first part, what can we infer about the strong and descriptive verbs? Already, it's kind of like it's out of control. So you've got uh, festooned, um, rising, you've got a flash of fire appeared, the smoke thickened, okay? A lot of things that are kind of building the sense of the verb that's building. Small flame stirred at the trunk and crawled away. So notice that the, that right there, crawled away, could even coincide with our question number two. Personification is a term when inanimate objects are giving human-like qualities, okay? The fire doesn't crawl, crawling is what a baby does, right? Crawling is what you do, um, you know, if there is a fire and you have to get out, you crawl underneath the smoke. The crawled away through the leaves and brushwood, dividing and increasing right there, that indicates personification. OK, so how does the crawled away give uh, this? How does that what does that do for us as readers when we imagine the fire? So we are imagining this concept of the fire almost pacing itself. Right. If you've ever seen a brush fire, it just kind of begins to sweep through the dead leaves, the dead shrubbage and begins to move. So um, also dividing and increasing, those are verbs as well. So what in these first kind of chapters answers helps us to answer these questions? What can we infer from the strong and descriptive verbs? We already know, like the fire is growing out of control. The fire is wild. The fire is not something that can be contained by these boys, okay? And then per, number two, personification of the term um, is a term when inanimate objects are given human-like qualities. We already have crawled away for the fire, okay? And let's find some more. Actually, take a moment and pause the video so that you can go ahead and answer even question number one, okay? 
now that you've paused and have done question number one, let's continue on. It says one patch touched a tree trunk and scrambled up. There's another quality, scrambled. Like if you've seen a squirrel or a raccoon or some sort of little tiny woodland creature, right? They scramble up the tree um, like a bright squirrel. So right here, we have a metaphor that indicates... Um, or excuse me, a simile. So the fire is being referred to as a squirrel. So it's small, little tiny, and it begins to scamper up the tree. Look at this. Here's three verbs right here. Increase, the smoke increased, shifted, rolled outwards. So the fire is increasing, getting bigger, shifted, moves completely, and then rolls outwards. So it's this idea of that cloud smoke kind of bellowing up and outwards. The squirrel leapt. So again, it's not an actual, like a real squirrel. This right here is the fire flames. So the, as the fire goes up, catches on to the other, leapt on the wings of the wind and clung to another standing tree eating downward. So it, the fire jumps over to another tree, starts to burn it downwards, right? Beneath the dark canopy of leaves and smoke, the fire laid hold of the forest and began to gnaw. Gnaw is definitely a animal type verb. It gives this idea of chewing, of pulling at something that's dead. Um, you know, a, a tiger will gnaw at the corpse of its, of its meat when it eats, right? It just pulls things off. So right here, you're getting this sense that the little tiny squirrel is now gnawing that it has gotten bigger. So if you look down here at question number Three, how does the growth of the fire represent the attitude and actions of the boys? You'll notice from chapter one and chapter two, the boys' tension and arguments began to grow and grow and grow. So there's Piggy who's like, we need to have the conch. We need to be following the rules, you know? And Jack's like, well, let's go hunting. Well, oh, let's go hunting. And Ralph is like, we should try to survive. You know, let's uh, take care of each other. Let's look out for one another. So there's this growing tension, even when they were starting the fire, right? And they had to pull Piggy's glasses. There's the tension because he's like, those are mine. We need it. Ah, like there's growing tension. Um, this part right also here, uh, what human or animal qualities are illustrated by the fire, right? And also what uh, strong verbs and descriptions. So, so far we've got a squirrel starting to gnaw, which is a bigger type animal. Okay. Take a moment and pause. Sorry, I know I'm going really fast. Take a moment and pause. Go back and answer some of those questions real quick based upon what I said and based upon what you know from the story. Go ahead and pause. I don't think you paused. Did you pause? All right. You paused. Good. Thank you. Um, the squirrel leapt on the wings and clung to, clung to another tree beneath the dark canopy of leaves. It started to gnaw. That would be a good one to circle right there. Acres of black and yellow smoke rolled steadily towards the sea. So at this point, almost half of the hillside is on fire. At the sight of the flames, uh, the boys broke into a shrill, excited cheering. A shrill, excited cheering. So they're kind of happy. Yeah, we started a fire. Yeah, this is great. The flames, as though they were kind of wildlife, crept as a jaguar creeps on its belly towards a line of birch saplings. Saplings are birds or some other type of small creature that they could they could gnaw at. So notice that it was a small little squirrel scampered up, little tiny, right? It gets to the top and now there's bellowing smoke. And the boys are like, we created fire. Yeah, we did it. We did it. And then all of a sudden it begins to suddenly become a wildlife of its own. It turns and now is described as a jaguar which is not something that you want to mess with. So a squirrel, you're like, oh, squirrel, look, look, there's a squirrel. Let's go get some peanuts for the squirrel, right? And then all of a sudden, if you see a jaguar, you're like, nope, I'm out. Like, because that thing crawls on its belly and gets ready to pounce and nothing can stop it. So right here, um, it says they flapped at the first of the trees. Um, this is These are the boys in the branches grew a brief foliage of fire. So they came in with, with you know, there's, uh, like tree branches trying to, to create more smoke. And of course, the, those catch on fire. And so the heart of the flame leapt nimbly across the gap between the trees and then went swinging and flailing along the whole row of them. So at this point, all of the trees have started to catch fire. Okay. 
beneath the campering boys a quarter of a mile acre of the forest. So quarter of a mile. That's a long way to catch on fire. Okay. Was savage with smoke and flame. Savage. So we've now gone from a, a scampering squirrel to uh, an animal that was gnawing at something now to a jaguar that's ripping things apart. Um, this idea that it is a wildlife, it is out of control, now has burned up a quarter of an acre, right? And is being described as a savage, unruly, out of control, savage animal, okay? The separate noises of the fire merged into a drum roll that seemed to shake the mountain. So as it burns and crisps and things crack and break, and the boys are screaming and running, it begins to almost like be this uh, drumming that kind of propels the intensity of the situation, okay? Um, looking at our last part, well, one, or excuse me, looking at the last two questions, number three, how does the growth of the fire represent the attitude and actions of the boys? There, You have noticed from the first chapter that it's slowly starting to build, which this right here almost foreshadows the fact of how out of control they could get. Um, Lord of the Flies, one of the biggest themes here is, is civility versus savagery. Um, we had talked and asked questions about how, you know, in apocalyptic sense, how long would it take for a society to unravel? That's what's happening here. Um, looking at number four, explain how this moment in chapter two is a turning point for the boys and the social order on the island. So they were even arguing in these moments of who and how they're going to start the fire. How does that translate into what is the turning point? So it's when they arrive, they're, you know, they're from a boarding school, they follow rules, they have to listen and obey. But then it transfers into, well, we're going to steal your glasses to make a fire and we're going to do this. And so how does that shift? Like, what's the shift? They are slowly moving from being civil to savage. And this is a key turning point because the argument they they want to try to still survive, but then they get pushed. Uh, the fire gets out of control. So how does this moment, how is this moment a turning point for the boys on the island? What what are what is happening? Are they, are they losing the rules and regulations? Are they becoming more chaotic? Um, what in this fire scene kind of alludes to how the boys behave? Okay, if you've ever seen a group of small children like at a birthday party or a park setting um, or a playground, um, they, you know, they get along and everything's fine. And then once one or two have a little argument or they start fighting, it just get it's just builds and builds and builds until I won't say it explodes, right? One person's upset. Another person wants to do this back and forth. And all of a sudden it's, it's, it's out of control. How is this moment, that moment for the boys? How is this, um, fire, an animalistic fire representative of how the boys shift. Okay. Take a moment. Please make sure that you've got these questions answered. Um, we'll go through them to make sure that we understand. Um, we are actually, for every close reading that we're going to do, we're going to be writing an analytical paragraph. Um, the analytical paragraphs um, uh, will talk and discuss certain things, and I will have a video for that and a lecture for that. Um, but we're going to take this material right here about the fire and the descriptive verbs and what it means for the boys and begin to write about it. So we're, it's, it's not an essay. It's a uh, very detailed paragraph. But because there's so much in a close reading, it becomes an analytical paragraph. I'll explain more. Don't stress. Okay. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, take a moment to make sure that you have fully answered these questions, complete sentences, complete thoughts. Um, we want to make sure that we're doing uh, our best reflective work. Okay. If you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, here we go into chapter two, the animalistic fire. Love the story.